Columbus Small Animal Hospital, loving our work. I'm Dr. Jim Kramer. This is Buster. He's a neutered male miniature schnauzer, and he's a little less than six years old, and he's having a great difficulty using his hind legs. Both of his hind legs are very weak. Neither one will support his weight, and they very much tend to cross over most of the time. When he tries to walk at all, they cross over. He has a complete proprioceptive deficit on his left hind leg. You can see that it's upside down. His paw is upside down and he's not writing it. He doesn't know it's upside down or doesn't have the motor skills to write it. It's useless to him at this time. Buster has long-standing medial luxating patellas on both sides. And so our first step is to fix those. So we go into surgery using autoclave vet wrap to make our hanging leg sterile technique. We cut down over the trochlear groove, use a bone saw to cut on either side of that trochlear groove, and then we're going to use bone chisels or osteotomes to remove a wedge, a trochlear block, called a trochlear block recession, then deepen the groove with the bone saw, and then replace the trochlear block. And there's that, that block that we've removed, and here is the groove that we've created that's deeper. And now we're gonna make it deeper yet, put the block back, move the tibial crest, which is the insertion of the patellar ligament, over to the middle where it was supposed to be in the first place, which is what caused that problem. And then we'll repeat that entire procedure on the other leg. In addition to the bilateral luxating medial patellas, Buster has intervertebral disc disease. The spinal cord does not show up on x-rays. That's why there are CAT scans and MRI machines. But in Buster's case, we can actually see disc material up in the spinal canal. We actually see this in two places, between the last thoracic vertebrae with the last rib and the first lumbar vertebrae, and also between the second and third lumbar vertebrae. When an intervertebral disc like this ruptures, in humans we refer to it as a slipped disc, the disc material moves upward and occupies the territory where the spinal cord is supposed to be, and the spinal cord is still there, and because it's encased in bone, has nowhere to go. This traumatic event causes inflammation and swelling of the tissues around the spinal cord, compounding the problem, much like stepping on a garden hose. This makes it difficult for the nervous impulses, the messages to get through, going both directions, sensory messages going from the hind legs up to the brain, and motor messages from the brain back to the muscles on the hind legs. At some point this becomes permanent, and so the paralysis is permanent. Unless we can intervene in ways that can reestablish this pathway for these nerve messages to travel. So here's Buster sporting the doggles, having class 4 therapeutic laser. He receives a great many of these treatments, retreating both of his stifle joints post-surgically from the luxating patella surgeries at this time. So here he is in hydrotherapy. The buoyancy provided by the water allows him to support his weight so that his hind legs can stand in a more normal fashion, which he's unable to do when he's not floating in water at this time to try to get muscle memory and to have these nerve pathways start to function more effectively. Part of the therapy is aimed at giving Buster the idea that he could walk again, that his hind legs could become more useful to him. So we want him to not only gain the ability, the mechanical ability, but also the emotional and confidence that this could work out. You see now he's standing on his hind legs with his front legs elevated. So we take him outside to see how he does. You can see he's improved quite a bit. He can advance his legs and place them. Sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. That time the right one failed and he fell to the right side. You can see that proprioceptive problem on the left has improved a lot at this point and he's doing much better. So in these edited videos we don't show all that we do of course although we show a lot of his therapy and different types of therapy. Here he is with physical therapy. We're trying to get him to balance and to use these hind legs to place them to support his weight. And he is starting to respond. 
At this point, he has received multiple acupuncture treatments from my wife, who is a certified veterinary acupuncturist, and also multiple class 4 therapy laser treatments, hydrotherapy, and physical therapy. We are dedicated to Buster's improvement and to his recovery, and we spend a great deal of time working with him with a variety of modalities and lots of different efforts all aimed in the same direction so that he can regain the use of his hind legs. So weeks are going by and we're working with Buster daily. Once again we are outside evaluating his ability and letting him live a little bit, feel the sun on his face and the wind blowing. You can see that he's interested in life. These cases are not always linear. They don't always just improve daily. There are good days and bad days. Here he is again with the doggles and here he is receiving more class 4 laser therapy. You can see he responds well to this. He's very compliant. He sits quietly and seems to enjoy the attention and enjoy these treatments, be it acupuncture, laser therapy, physical therapy, hydrotherapy. He's a good patient to work with. Throughout this entire challenge, Buster's had a very strong tendency for his hind legs to cross over. And so I constructed this splint to Velcro onto his hind legs and to pull them apart. So we we'll utilize this to try to give him some practice and some muscle memory having his legs not cross over. So here's Buster with yet another acupuncture treatment. He is connected to the acupunctoscope, which puts a small electric charge through the acupuncture needles once placed. You can see there's nothing painful about it. He's not sedated or being restrained in any way. He is very compliant and, and almost seems to enjoy these treatments. So once again, more physical therapy. Now he seems to have a more of a problem with his right leg. And here he is again, weak in both hind legs, crossing over. They just don't seem to be responding very well. He actually seemed to be doing better earlier in this process. But as I said, these are not always linear. And so we're in this for the long haul. We want him to be better, not just today or yesterday, but permanently. And so we continue to work with him. You can see there, he's standing very normally like a regular dog, which he couldn't begin to do when he came in originally. He was actually walking mostly on his front legs when he came in. His hind legs were of very little use to him. But we spend a lot of time with him. We work with him with all these different modalities over and over and over, day after day after day. And slowly, he does gain strength and capability. So here is my wife, Dr. Anne affecting another acupuncture treatment. She does do research on every case and develops a protocol and a plan for each individual case. There's not one acupuncture protocol that works for all of these cases even though they're similar. They are all different and so she tailors the acupuncture protocol for each one and then evolves it as the case plays out. So she spends a lot of time evaluating and working up each of these to try to maximize the benefit from these acupuncture treatments. And here's the payoff. It's been several weeks since we started this project with surgery and all these different modalities of treatment. I spent a lot of time with Buster and a lot of effort from a lot of different people. And here he is with his owner who's extremely happy, thrilled with the results. He may not be ever completely normal 100% but he has certainly gained a lot of strength and use of his hind legs enough that he can run and play and live a happy life. He's a good dog and he's doing extremely well and we're very pleased with the outcome. He seems to be pain free and he's gained a lot of motor skills and activity here that he didn't have before. And so Buster continues to improve. He just gains more and more strength and capability and confidence on his hind legs. You can see he's using them quite well now. And so Buster has come back to see us and here he is with his owner. Some of the leaves are starting to fall now. It's a little bit later in the year and he's done extremely well. He's come a long way. 
now Little Buster is moving so well and so fast that he's hard to keep in the frame. Normally we would end this video right here with him looking into the camera, but we've added this little postscript. You can see <laughs> how normal behaving he is. His hair has grown back on his hind legs, and this is all but a memory to him. Got up a little slowly, but he moves surprisingly well. Very happy for you, Buster. It's been a long road. Good for you. So it's been a little bit less than a year since Buster first came in with such terrific challenges. His hind paws crossed over. He couldn't use his hind legs at all at that time. And now for almost a year, he's done extremely well. So gratifying to see that he continues to run and play and frolic and have a great life. We put a lot of work into you, Buster, and it paid off. Columbus Small Animal Hospital, loving our work. <laughs>